All right, I'm gonna give a test to the fans. I've just got the uh, wire plug set up to a couple jumper cables right to the, uh, right to a battery. So let's try this out. Here it goes. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dan Dulac and this is my V10 Ultima Evolution Convertible Build. In the last episode, we put the side pods and the rear bulkhead on for the final time. They are permanently fitted, they're not going anywhere. So now what we're gonna work on on this video is we're gonna button up the rear bulkhead, we're gonna put all the heat shielding in place, we're gonna mount all the tanks, the sump, the coolant overflow tank, we're gonna mount the side coolers, water cooler, oil cooler, with their fans, that's gonna require some bracket fabrication, and then we're gonna start running some lines. So we've got a ton of stuff to do in this episode. Without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, what you're looking at here is the piece I've already cut um, using various cardboard paper templates for the rear bulkhead, or the rear firewall, if you will. It's um, this DEI foam and aluminum uh, heat shield. I use this on the tank. The only difference is I got black here instead of the uh, raw aluminum. I wanted this to blend a little bit better on the, on the rear firewall, but it's got uh, some sticky, sticky tape on the back with some fiberglass batting and then the aluminum coating. So this is all cut out, ready to go. And I am putting it here on the rear bulkhead. So I made the cutout for the oil sump. Remember the oil sump sits back in here as well as the mounting bracket for the water coolant tank goes there. Those pieces are cut out. We're ready to put this in, so let's get to it. The heat shielding is in. So I've got a piece of aluminum here behind the sump. I ran out of black, so I just used a piece of aluminum, the raw heat shielding. And I decided not to cover down here only because this is like triple insulated, this lower firewall bulkhead. So that should be okay, but we are ready to start bolting tanks to the firewall and get to getting the plumbing routed in. So it came out pretty good. By the way, you may have seen, this stuff's a little bit tricky to cut given it's uh, fiberglass backed and uh, aluminum. These tend to work pretty good, these aluminum shears, uh, purpose-built for cutting really thin aluminum. Those, those tend to work pretty well. So anyway, let's get to uh, bolting these tanks to the firewall. This thing's gonna come together now. All right, 
I've started to fit uh, all the engine bay components and tanks and started the plumbing. So let's check out, show you guys where I'm at. So here we are, I've got my sump tank in, I've got both ECU, primary, secondary, as well as the transmission ECU piggybacked on top there. So those are all set in place. The main fuel line is right here. That's a dash six. I'll run up the back of the engine and connect in. I've also got the coolant elbows in place. Pretty tight fit in there. That should work just fine. I did find that I'm gonna have to kind of change direction on the 16 AN line uh, coming out of the oil sump that will feed the engine. You guys remember I made up this little U-bend that originally was gonna sit right in the middle here. But as I found out, these fittings, they're a little bit longer in the end. Of course, that's rigid. So the shorter you make these AN hose, hoses, the less flexible they become as you approach uh, that fitting. So I don't think this U-bend is sharp enough of a U-bend. So what I'm gonna do actually is just buy a 180 degree 16 fitting and uh, that'll tighten up this U-bend significantly. Give me some extra length here to work with and then that will work better. Uh, I'm gonna keep plugging away at this, but uh, so far so good. It won't be long before I get this, before I get this engine in place. So let's get to it. All right, I've been working on the side pods here. I've got the ever so awesome side pod ducts in. These are off the RS model. Fitted those directly to the Evo, which looks awesome. Started fitting the oil cooler here using all the brackets, custom brackets, aluminum brackets I made here. Just enough clearance for an elbow. AN fitting right here. That'll work. And the return line right there. One of the things that I'm gonna to have to swap out and return, I bought this 10 inch pull cooling fan. It's a pull through, not a push. And that was gonna go down here. You can see it's a little too big. I could probably make that work. I'm just gonna return them. I got a pair of them. Probably do like a, a nine inch or even an eight inch just to be safe because it is sitting on the tank down there and I want some clearance given how the tank is angled. Anyway, that's kind of a bummer. That little Cetrab oil cooler is nicely tucked in the opening. So um, that, should, that should draw in some nice cool air with addition to the cooling fan. And I've basically got the exact same setup on the other side as well. It's coming together pretty quick. It's uh, helpful doing all the prefab up front, and then once you get to final assembly, it goes pretty quick. 48 hours later. All right, I've got the little radiators. This is the coolant radiator for the transmission cooler on this side, and the oil cooler for the engine on this side. They are bolted in, ready to go, and now I'm getting ready to mount up the smaller fan that I purchased. Here is an eight inch fan, and this, uh, fits in here something like this. It's 
So what I need to do is uh, make up some mounting brackets in there, which I'll tie, we'll tie into the, or the cooler mounting brackets there. That should work good. Perfect size, these flow I think 500 CFM. And these are puller fans. They're actually reversible. You can make them pusher or puller. But I'll keep these in the puller configuration. It'll draw air nicely uh, in the ducts here into the cooler. Keep the oil cool as well as the transmission cool. So sweet, let's get to making those brackets. got one side mocked up here, made some aluminum brackets. You see here, um, basically just bolted to the original aluminum hanger for the cooler and the same on the other side. Actually be reusing the holes over here that are in the side pod to mount that. So basically we'll, two bolts will be holding down the fan and the cooler and the side pod bolted to the tank. So I just have to round off some of these corners, clean them up, a little bit of trimming, paint them black, and this is ready to go. All right, I've got the cooling fan brackets all made. You saw me make those. They're all painted, ready to go. So let me show you what I got and then we'll put these things together. All right, so this is the passenger side. Here are the brackets I made. And you may have noticed in the video, I stamped them. UL stands for upper left. Um, they're all stamped so that when I reassemble these things, I know where to go, I know where they go. Uh, here's the fan ready to go. Again, this is an eight inch fan. Uh, put some foam, came with the, the fan, these foam uh, support or separators. Pretty easy mock-up, just using the existing uh, mounting brackets that I made for these coolers. I used some uh, aluminum riv nuts over here on this side as well. So let's put this together and then I uh, will get these things mounted in the car for the final time. All right, the fans are all mounted up on the cooler. Let me show you guys how these mount in there. Two holes here on this back bracket. And again, I'll use the fan mounting plate. I'll just sandwich in between the, the bracket and the nut in the back. 
And then on this side, there's one rib nut. So there's three mounting locations for this. So those two rear holes, I actually reuse the, the uh, put one additional bolt in here. These two uh, screws here are for the gas tank, but I'm gonna reuse this one. And I just added one more for the top mount. And so the side bracket will, will mount up here. And then that third with the rib nut, I have a bracket that I fabricated here, it goes under the fuel supply line, and then a slotted hole down there so I can adjust where, how close that cooler comes to the side, the side pod vent here. And then I've got a piece of foam here at the bottom, and the cooler actually rests on the foam, plus it, it doubles as a way to seal air. So air coming in here is kind of forced through uh, the cooler. So. Let's get this thing bolted up and then I'll uh, show the other side too. those coolers and fans are in there all mounted up ready to go very rigid as I mentioned these two bolts here go right in the side bracket uh, with some lock nuts you can see there this is where most of the support comes from and then I've got a third support here with this aluminum bracket that goes down to the side so this thing is very very rigid that's not going anywhere Came out nice, and then on the other side, basically a mirror image. This is the oil cooler. Same setup here, a uh, third bracket on this side, and on this side, again, I just reused uh, two posts with some lock nuts from outside the body here. So again, this is very rigid as well. So, lines up nicely with the, the duct opening. There's just enough spacing. I'm not gonna be able to get the camera in there, but there's probably three millimeter of spacing between the cooler and the, the side duct, which is great. So that's gonna come out nice, should work nice. I did have to carve a little bit of the fiberglass out here, just trim this out just enough so that I could get a fitting screwed on there. Be no issue with this side. Got it wired, there's a wire harness here. I just gotta, you know, get that harnessed in there and should be good to go. So that's a big step done. All right, I'm gonna give a test to the fans. Passenger side, this will be the transmission cooler fan. Wire plug, set up to a couple jumper cables right to the, uh, right to a battery. So let's, uh, let's try this out. Here it goes. Nice, and let me get a piece of paper. kind of see the rate of air coming out of there and then there's suction there holds the paper right in place it's perfect not too loud all right I'm gonna unplug the fan see if this paper drops there it goes perfect all right I'm continuing work on the plumbing in the engine bay for the Ultima I'm now running the a vapor vent line from the tank to a vapor charcoal canister and I'm running out of room fast in the engine bay so let me show you what I'm thinking to mount this charcoal canister let's take a look all right here is the vent line it comes out of the top of the aeromotive fuel pump hanger this is for a fuel vapor in the tank this line runs along I'll have it run along the fuel supply line it goes back there ultimately comes down I'll run it along the underside up to the left side of the oil sump up and then I made a hole in the side of the rear bulkhead here fiberglass and then used a grommet and, and uh, slid the vapor line through the hole so I'm thinking of using this cavity back here 
this is kind of underneath the fuel filler cap and neck. Um, but if I tuck it in the back corner, it should be out of the way, somewhat out of sight, but also accessible if I ever need to get in there. So let me show you the canister. Canister is right here. It's not very big. I kind of just searched around Google looking at uh, vapor canisters and I found this one kind of the smallest I could find. That's the part number. And it's got an input for the tank line. That's the lower line. And then the purge line is at the top. And that purge line will connect directly here to the EVAP purge line. We'll inject vapors into the intake during startup. But I'm thinking this is gonna tuck nicely. I'm gonna back in here. So I'll make a bracket for it. The fuel filler neck is somewhat L-shaped and, and kind of moves over to the fuel filler tank into the hole. So it should be out of the way. I'll double check it. I'm thinking that's gonna work. Tucked in back there in the corner. Use some of that dead space. Gotta be efficient with every little square inch you can in this engine bay. Right, here's the end result. I got uh, this bracket made. You can see I used one of the body mounts at the top, the stud there, and then I just put one rivet into the base. And then charcoal tank gets in there. Just sit right on there. And then I'll just use a worm clamp just to clamp it around that bracket. Hold it in place. All right, the vapor tank, charcoal tank is in there and all plumbed in. Got the vent line, the purge line, all in there. As you can see, I routed it through the rear bulkhead and then the lines go down around and I will pair up the fuel line with the purge line once the engine's in because it comes on this side, driver's side of the engine. So that will work, sweet. All right, next up, I'm gonna mount the fuel filler caps. Requires some uh, drilling and some placement. I've already got the holes mapped out here. Here is the fuel filler covers. Those will go on like that. Very nice. Comes with a set of keys so that you can lock it. Very cool. So I've got that side set up as well as driver's side is all marked out too. So let's get these things drilled and should be pretty easy mount up. All right, made some great progress. I got this engine bay coming together quite nicely. Let's take a quick look at uh, where we're at. So you can see I've got uh, basically the entire side pod built out. Fuel filler neck, fuel filler nozzle and cover all in place. Cooling fan, oil cooler, 
all in place and almost a mirror image on this side. This transmission cooler, obviously the fuel pumps over here and it is coming together. Looking pretty good. In fact, if you even just take a look at this quarter, it's almost starting to look finished. Imagine that. So anyway, so next video, I'm going to wrap up, get these, get the wiring loomed up and set in place where it needs to go. And then I think I'm gonna drop this engine, drop this bad boy in the car. Oh, the other thing I gotta do is weld in the bungs, both the O2 sensor bung, as well as the exhaust temperature sensor, one on each side. We'll get that welded in. We'll get it all placed in there and we'll start plumbing the engine to the rest of the system here. So that's that. We'll see you next time.